Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 11th of March of 2023. Today we have some updates, so let's start. And first we are going to start from the Kupin's front line as usually. The Russians are saying that as a result of clashes and artillery duels, artillery attacks, the Ukrainians lost 50 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles and 1 artillery system Gvazdika. The Russians were attacking in the vicinity of Grenikovka and in the vicinity of Rozovka, this one. The Ukrainians lost there one volunteer from Estonia in the vicinity of Novoselovska. Now let's talk about Liman. As you can see, there are some icons in this area. The Russians continue their attack from this salient that located on the west north of Dibrovo in direction of Yampolovka and Terny. Uh, that this is some kind of, let's say, secure operation to protect the flanks while the Russians are pushing from Dibrova in direction of Seversky Danes River. The Russians are saying that during the previous 24 hours, as a result of clashes on Liman front line and the vicinity of these two areas, the Russians, the Ukrainians lost 90 soldiers, four armored vehicles, and two artillery systems, one Akatsa and one D30. The Russians reported that they managed to capture lots of prisoners of war in this forest and those prisoners were saying that they were just mobilized and were thrown by the Ukrainian military authorities to the front line without a proper trainings and, and without a proper skill. So this is the reason why. So now we see and we understand that the most Western sources are saying that Ukrainians are trying to accumulate and prepare the Ukrainian army before greatest offensive operation from their side. And to do this, the only possible solution they have is to throw to the front line the just recently mobilized forces. So as you can see, the level of losses from the Ukrainian side on this front line have been reduced. And now the losses, the level of losses is 90 soldiers per day, at least for today. Let's wait for tomorrow's update to make some conclusions. But if the level of losses is going to be at the same level that means that the russians at the final stage of the support operation on liman front line that and this operation as we, as we know the main goal of that operation is to support the russians who attacks and trying to encircle bakhmut and this is this is normal because as we know the ukrainians are planning to start greatest deblocate operation and they were tr they wanted to start this operation this week but the weather is so bad so that the Ukrainians were forced to move this operation and they're promised that they would start this deblocate operation at the beginning of the next week after the weekend. This weekend uh, the, Rus the Ukrainians are saying is a rainy period of time and the quality of ground is very poor so that's why they want to pass this period of weather time and then they will start their greatest deblocate operation. Now let's take about, take about Bakhmut. As you can see, there are a lot of icons in this area. And the first, let's start from the report of Minister of Defense. They said us that they told us that as a result of clashes in Bach on Donetsk front line, and Donetsk is not just Bakhmut, Donetsk also is Avdiivka. So we, I believe that we need to split the numbers between these two areas. And the Russians are saying that as a, as a result of active clashes and active for, for storm operation in this area. The Ukrainians lost 140 soldiers, 9 armored vehicles and 2 artillery systems, 2 D-30 howitzers. Furthermore, the Ukrainians lost 2 raiders in this area, INTPQ-50 and INTPQ-36. These raiders, the Ukrainians are using these raiders for counter-artillery duels. Now let's talk about Bakhmut. This morning started with updates that the Russians uh, started their final storm operation of Bakhmut. And we know that these days the Russians are trying to penetrate and develop their bridgehead on the north in this industrial zone, on the east, trying to establish control over the marketplace, from the south, trying to develop their progress in this residential area, and in the east, on the west, the town by the name of Hromovod that located on the northwest of Bakhmut, and the statue of, of MiG-17 in the south uh, west of Bakhmut as well. So for now, the Russians are trying to storm or trying to penetrate the Ukrainians' defense orders in Hromova. If you remember, the Ukrainians, after they destroyed the bridge upon this river, they restored the bridge and they created their own um, pontoon bridge. So that's why I believe they do have some possibilities to use this road for supply and support. And also the Ukrainians um, have 
some positions on the south and these areas in the gray zone we remember that yesterday the russians published a video and photo confirmation that the state of mig 17 was destroyed so the russians are trying to attack these two areas and we understand if the russians are able to establish control over chromova and over the state of mig 17 that means that bakhmut will be uh, will appear in cauldron this will be a complete 100 percent cauldron let's return back to the western sources map this is the situation in bakhmut so starting this morning, the Russians are trying to develop this bridge hat in the north, trying to get control over Chromova. And the Russians are trying to develop their bridge hat in the south, trying to establish control over MiG-17 statue. So as you can see there, uh, if the Russians are able to establish control over these two blue clouds, the Ukrainians will have just a small uh, channel, these two kilometers channel um, that they can use for supply and support but uh, i believe that highly unlikely the ukrainians are going to use this because there is a river some kind of water barrier and there is not much area that they can cross this river and to use these fields and they will be under complete russian control so anyway there is no doubt that if the russians get this and um, bridgehead near Chromova and near the airport aircraft um, statue they will encircle Bakhmut furthermore don't forget that according to the Russian sources that controls the south part of Bakhmut in this area near dam furthermore the Russians controls a half of Budyonovka Sabachayevka on the south as well uh, these days the Russians during the previous 48 hours crossed the river Bakhmutka and establish or not or at least there were clashes uh, in this uh, marketplace and yesterday the russians uh, started storming of the north the, and for now it's highly very difficult to determine where exactly the russians are storming there are a lot of video and photo confirmation but there are a lot of concerns a lot of questions about the geolocation of those storms so let's update but when talking about the north part this is like softly marked on the map very difficult to determine where exactly so as you can see the ukrainians has a lot of problems have a lot of problems and their military authorities are saying that just on monday they're planning to start the blockade operations something tells me that maybe Mo monday is going to be too late for the blockade operation of bahmut and i'll remind you that according to the russian sources and the ukrainian sources there are around 12,000 army inside bahmut and this is going to be a tragedy and catastrophe for the Ukrainians if they will be encircled and if this army is going to be destroyed. Uh, the Ukrainians, if they lose this bridge hat, this town with this army inside, uh, this situation can cause lots of damage f to the Ukrainians, and this loss can determine the entire story of um, battle for Ukraine in 2023. Now let's move to the south and let's discuss Avdiivka. The front line is also active in this area. The Russian source map has been updated, as you can see. Now they're showing that they established control over the town by the name of Isola, but not over the entire town. At least the western part of this town still remains in the gray zone. But maybe uh, it's just to, for better understanding, maybe this entire town is under the Russians. Uh, the Ministry of Defense today reported that as a result of clashes and attack, the Russians were attacking these three towns they were attacking Zaliznyanskaya this one they were attacking the uh, artillery and storming uh, Ivanovskaya or Krasne and the Russians were according to the report were attacking Toninka and the north of Pieski front line Pieski bridgehead and if you take a look at the western sources map you're gonna see that there are two icons showing that the Russians are trying to attack uh, Severna from two th sides, from the east, from the from the west and from the east, trying to encircle this town. So if the Russians uh, are able to do this, and if they will be if they're successful, uh, they will be able to take control over these t towns like Severna and uh, Toninka at the same time, and to develop this bridgehead, of course, the Ukrainians I believe will appear in some kind of operational encirclement in Avdiivka because this is the current situation and from this area the Russians will be able to establish fire and physical control even fire and visual control over these two roads that Ukrainians uses for supplying supporting this town and after that the situation is going to develop very badly for the Ukrainians in Avdiivka front line on Avdiivka front line now let's move to the south and let's discuss Ogledar. As you can see, there are also a lot of icons. The Russians reported that they were attacking the town by the name of Prichistovka 
on the west of Pavlovka and Unuglidar. Uh, as a result of artillery duels in this area, the Ukrainians lost 70 soldiers, 4 armored vehicles and 1 artillery system D-20, but without any progress on the ground. We were expecting that the Ukrainians would start some kind of counter-offensive operation in this area, and they made few attempts to return the residential area uh, that located between, uh, between Mikolska and Pavlovka, I'm talking about this residential area. And we were expecting that the Ukrainians would try to return control over the square between these forest lines. And they made few attempts, but all those attempts were repulsed and the Ukrainians returned back inside of Ugledar. And I believe that uh, they are not going to start any offensive operation in this area the next weeks, because they were pretty damaged as well, and they had a lot of losses as the Russians. Now let's move to, let's talk about uh, South Zaporozhye uh, area. As you can see, there are also a lot of artillery duels in this area. The Russians reported about airstrikes, about artillery attacks. For this evening, we received a piece of news that the Russians uh, using the Heraniums, uh, drones and missiles attack Zaporozhye, the industrial zone in this area, or maybe some energy facilities in this area. And uh, for now, we still don't have any information about the results and the numbers, but I believe that we know that the Ukrainians accumulated a pretty powerful army in the vicinity of Zaporozhye, so I believe that the Russians were trying to get the accumulation of the forces and to prevent the Ukrainians, uh, any attempt from the Ukrainian side to start counter-offensive operation in the direction of Militopol. Kherson brought us also a lot of updates. The Russians are saying that as a result of clashes on Kherson uh, front line, the Ukrainians lost 50 soldiers and 17 armored vehicles. The level of losses on Kherson front line is still very high uh, and I believe that it can't continue the same way. Sooner or later this area can be broken by the Russians because the level of losses is very high uh, and the most important that the level of losses among the armored vehicles is very high. Uh, let's follow this situation because I believe that uh, soon we are going to see uh, something uh, important and something something new on the Kherson front line. I'm not sure that the Russians, as I told that, I'm not sure that the Russians are going to cross the river and to establish control over Kherson, but I believe that Ukrainians uh, sooner or later will be forced to step back and Kherson is going to turn into grey zone where we're going to see some clashes between the command those groups or something like this. But there are still a lot of civilians in that town and I believe that, uh, for now, there is no decision, I believe, for both sides about Kherson. But the only thing that we see that the Ukrainians had a lot of losses on this front line without any active combats on the ground and so on. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you against the many violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.